Yo guys, Jensk here, and today I'm um, I'm gonna talk about treaty, little topics. First, sub rogues. Um, actually, it's actually one of my favorite uh, specs in the game. If you don't know that, and uh, right now it needs help, but it needs help uh, in a different way than other specs. Actually. Um, I'm gonna talk about the changes that happened and how it feels for me at least playing uh, 3v3 since I played uh, just a few games of trees in mains and um, in alts in my alt and I'm gonna talk about my predictions to the AWC so let's start first sub rogues I think sub rogues the problem they just need a redesign right but there's few things that uh, Blizzard can do in PV, in PvP without uh, really redesigning a lot, just maybe two changes, and they would, um, and they would actually just a few changes, and they would actually be able to buff uh, sustained damage. As it is, they can't. They just have too much control. So what you need to target, it's obviously the control. And the first offender, it's Shadowy Duel. This talent should just be removed. It's a really cool talent, but you can't trinket a Shadowy Duel. And it's only a 2 minute cooldown. And to force trinket, even if you could trinket this, you still have Blind, you still have Kidney Shot, and you still have Smoke Bomb. So I, I don't think this talent should be a thing. I think they should just remove it or make, for example, DFA so good that you don't want Shadowy Duel, right? one of the two the second thing is enveloping shadows which gives you another shard a charge of um, shadow dance and being able to just shadow dance and then shadow dance again is just a, a little bit broken because while in shadow dance you can sap there's a, a really easy fix without nerfing this talent and i'm gonna talk about it now just make sap I don't like to to nerf uh, or to design change stuff that it was fine before, but that due to the um, evolution of class design, which in my opinion, you know, uh, for me it's bad, the evolution of the class design. But uh, with current class design, being able to sap while in combat, it's uh, completely broken because you have kidney shot, you have blind, and you have other CC that you can sap off, right? So if you just make rogues not being able to sap while um, in combat, them themselves being in combat, I think you can actually get away with having two shards of, uh, charges of um, shadow lance. So if you want to sap, you just need to use Vanish, and since you get instantly off combat, you can sap off. I think that's the easiest fix that they can still do in uh, Shadowlands. And the uh, third thing is Kidney Shot. The, the problem right now with Rogues is just the control, right? And with this much control, you Kidney Shot off target, you cover the other two because you also play Subterfuge, you cover the other two DPSs with Cheap Shot, and uh, you do a go and during that go you need your dps to kill because even though you do have a lot of burst if you don't have shadow blades or um, that uh, symbols of that or um, or symbols of that you just won't kill right so i think they just need to to remove the the cc they have and buff the the single target damage i would like and if you do this, um, I think you can actually buff the the damage. I think Gloom Blade should be should be. I also think that they should be able to use swords. Uh, they already have a dagger a dagger spec, which is uh, assassination sub. In my opinion, should be a sword spec, and I think TBC will uh, change a lot of mentalities in blizzard uh, hq in terms of class design and i think uh, sub rogues being able to use swords with gl uh, gloom uh, blood would fix some of the um, of the issues that the spec has at the moment uh, in terms of sustained damage 
and uh, yeah guys like it, it's just really easy to fix this uh, spec you just remove shadowy dual recapping all that i said you remove shadowy dual you don't allow sap um, to be used if in combat so you need to use a vanish <coughs> sorry for that but you allow sap to not be a, you don't allow sap to be used in combat so you need to vanish for sap and then you just uh, make ship shot uh, cost 60 energy so you need to use kidney shot on your kill targets right because if you triple ship shot you don't have enough energy to do damage so yeah that would be what uh, i would do to sub rogues just lose a bit of control and uh, you you would still have sub you would still be able to use kidney shot on the off target if you really wanted and you just stand with ship shot but you wouldn't be able to do damage and triple ship shot and i think there's there needs to be a risk versus reward in this game and at the moment sub rogues uh, don't really have none and then you need obviously to nerf this conduit right i'm a 145 uh, item level conduit and it, it just allows me to take 10 percent damage while is installed so let's see the the better one but uh, it should be uh, like what 15 percent of your hp in damage it's just too strong just remove this or just rework this conduit i think it's uh, super broken and i don't think it's fun to to play subrogue currently oh you don't have it here but i don't think it's fun to play subrogue currently because you open and you run you open and you run and it's not fun to face a subrogue and it's not fun to be a subrogue in um, in this expansion so yeah i would just buff the sustain if um, if um, nerf the um, the the cc and you can easily nerf the cc you just remove shadowy dual sap can be used while in combat so you need to vanish to sap so you actually trade something to get the sap and um, you increase the energy from uh, ship shot so you can't kidney shot off target and uh, double ship shot uh, the other target sorry you can but you will lose a lot of energy right so uh, there's a trade there um but yeah those are my thoughts about sub rogue going on to the changes i did some trees yesterday and for the first time um ever um i actually enjoyed trees there's a lot of stuff that still needs to be fixed like red paladins like uh, arms warriors like uh, enhancement of healing like the wings procs from holy paladins um like fire mages like affliction overall not being able to kill someone until dampening you still can't but you yum faster so the games are faster and it felt like uh, when i was playing both my alt and my my main it just felt like uh, the games we lost it was because we fucked up we didn't play that much as well we only really queued in in uh, week one after that we just capped in twos mostly and um, we did like a few sessions here and there but uh, we didn't do longer sessions than one hour i think and yesterday we played for one hour we stayed at the same rating but it felt way better to play it just felt like and the first i i think five games we fucked up every single thing because there you go like my shaman was also sick or it's also sick so yeah <coughs> and uh, since the comp it's not meta you actually need to be in, to uh, in top shape in you so but it felt better it felt way better it felt like we have a chance to push some rating uh, which is a good thing it still feels like you need to outplay the enemy team because you play outplay by by quite a bit because they are playing with an affliction warlock but um on my part it felt uh, way better and i think they agree with me <clears throat> i still think that um, that uh, blizzard and i'm gonna do the best analogy for the changes blizzard keeps doing which is the changes are dismounted right they're in front of blizzard and blizzard it's one meter away from um, from the mountain and has a shotgun and 
they aim it, they shoot it, and they miss the fucking mountain. Um, you you still need to to tune stuff like uh, intervene in PvP, like uh, combustion in PvP, like uh, red paladins overall just <laughs> being able to one shot. Like enhancement healing also needs to be tuned. Like uh, affliction warlock damage needs to be needs to be tuned and survivability overall so or if you don't buff the damage you need to to buff the survivability right and in terms of damage I, i'm not only talking about dots i'm also talking about shadow bolt but um but it felt better okay it, it's in terms of um enjoyment i actually enjoyed myself yesterday because it felt like we had a chance but there's these moments in the game where a boomkin just pops and just kills your whole team and you can't really do anything about it because they are just so tanky and uh, that i uh, i still think that uh, they need to slightly nerf some uh, some specs that have been skipping uh, nerfs like boomkins for example but uh, overall it felt better now as for awc i think we will see a rise in uh, Red Warrior Resto Shaman this week, or Resto Shaman uh, Melicles overall this week. Um, I think that uh, the fact that Holy Paladin zoom faster uh, will make Red Warrior Resto Shaman really good, because the red brings um, the off healing the shaman needs, because shamans... The problem with shamans at the moment is that they can't burst heal and there's so much burst damage that um, they are kind of left out in that regard. They have a lot of mana, um, way more mana than they should have, but they should have a bit more instant healing. Not Riptide or more healing, I mean, not instant. Uh, not in Riptide, but uh, in like healing waves or healing surges should heal way more. <clears throat> If you do a healing surge, it should heal for like 15k, right? Shouldn't be 7 or 8k that you do now. But um, I think that's going to dominate. So my prediction for EU, it's actually going to be Lontar's team winning the whole thing. Depending on what uh, method, uh, method plays. So was team. And uh, I think we might see some ghetto comps like LA Fire Mage Wrestle Druid coming from Zipai because Asgarat it's a Wrestle Druid main. But maybe the Holy Paladin nerf wasn't enough for Wrestle Druid to be better in that comp. I'm really curious about that. Um, I think Zipai also has a really high chance be to win because he plays an elemental. He, they just play the two best casters in the game. And in my in my own opinion, LA Fire Mage Holy Paladin it's the best comp in the game still. But they might be countered by warriors. I want to see that because of the sustained damage warriors bring and the tank, the survivability they bring to the team as well, with the intervene conduit. <clears throat> I think Drainer will do extremely well. Uh, the games will be faster since the Holy Paladins will loom faster. Um, what more? And I think that's it. So my predictions for EU, it's actually either Zipai, uh, Lontar or Drainer winning. Uh, for uh, NA, I know that Kwai got uh, knocked out by a random team, I think. I would think they would win again because their comp is still one of the best comps as well. Windwalker, Fire Mage, Holy Paladin. Since Windwalkers are dodging the the nerfs uh, like uh, like gods, it seems like they have evasion, and they popped evasion at the start of the expansion, and they are dodging all, all type of nerfs. Um, but um, it depends on NA. I saw a CDU stream and he said that uh, he doesn't feel like uh, they have any chances. I think he's wrong. Uh, Artstop Auro just completely counters a lot of stuff. So let's see. But uh, what I'm more curious about in NA it's Cloud9. Because I have this suspicion that Mage Lock Druid 
as Destro Frost Mage, it's really strong. Or even as Athli is really strong. And I have this suspicion that uh, Shadow Play is really strong. Not because of the Warlock, but because of the mana change. Where you just do nothing until uh, the Paladin's own. But I don't know how that would fare against the Turbo Cleave, for example. Or against the jungle. I I'm just really curious about NA, but I think the best team there is just straight up Sidious team. And I think Cloud9, if MLD or Shadowplay with the rest of Shaman is good, they might have a chance, actually. I'm just really curious to see if Chanimals is going to bring out the uh, Warlock and if he does bring out, if it's going to be Destro or Athlete. I would bring out the Destro in a tournament setting just because you have the same damage. You kind of have a Rot damage through Havoc, Triple Conflag. You are way tankier and you have a Wind Condition before Dampening, which is called Chaos Bolt and Dark Soul. But uh, let's see. I'm actually really curious because I think MLD, for example, beats OTK. Any any comp that ODK can bring, I think MLD just wins. And you can't really go on a Frost Mage, and even though Frost Mage doesn't do much damage, they just slow it for the um, Destro Warlock to be good. They just slow shit for Destro. But uh, I'm going on a limb, and I'm actually going to say Cloud9 wins NA because they will play mage lock druids i feel like they will play mage lock druid and i'm really curious to see and i hope that no one brings affliction because okay this is the thing about the awc some specs that are not good might be see some some play in um in the tournament setting just because they counter so, uh, certain things and for example if you play extremely defensive and you play affliction warlock against the shadow priest boomy for example or uh, against the shadow priest fire mage you might win if they don't go on you and for some reason high rated players don't go on warlocks even though they are the squishiest spec uh, affliction don't go on affliction warlocks even though they are the squishiest spec in the game and you get every cooldown extremely easy so we might see some affliction gameplay but yeah guys let's watch the awc hope that during the awc we actually see some changes to the classes again we already saw that like two or three weeks ago awc was uh, going on and uh, they actually nerfed and buffed some stuff so yeah peace and have fun today